What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Medica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we ended up setting up our quantum compressors under the floor over here. Yeah, so we have these guys set up over here, trying to take our resources and turn them into singularities. So we're doing like glowstone and iron and gold and so on and so forth. So if we look at our singularities, you can see that we have quite a few of them. In fact, we have a whole lot of gold. Yeah, uh, we have a bunch of aluminum. And then we also have a few that aren't showing here. We have some of them we haven't even been able to make yet. For instance, one of the ones we haven't been able to make uh, was like the flux. Uh, yeah, the flux crystal one, this one here. So this one requires us to take diamonds, put it into a fluid transposer, and then put molt or uh, destabilized redstone onto it, right? So we have to have all of that stuff happening, which means we need a lot of diamonds, and we need to have ourselves a lot of molten redstone. Mm-hmm. So our redstone supply right now is looking pretty thin. We are collecting redstone essence, and this stuff gets turned into the redstone dust, which then turns into the blocks and gets put into the redstone singularity compressor. But as you can see right here, there are no redstone singularities in here. Yeah. So we need to kind of figure out what we're going to do here. Uh, another thing, I was looking at our diamonds. Um, I just got done fortuning a whole bunch of diamonds, but I think what we should really do, let's, I, I'm pretty sure we need like about a stack of each of these diamond singularities for where we need to go. <laughs> I've kind of been looking ahead a little bit, but yeah, I think what we need to do is set up some kind of way to automatically fortune this diamond ore and pretty much all of our other ores that we have, like this draconium ore, our lapis, our coal. We have a lot, we have thousands of these ores. And I was trying to place them all and then break them with Fortune 3. And while I can do that, it's just going to take a lot of time. I don't really think it's worth doing it like that by hand. Pretty much the hardest part is filling up my inventory and then pillaring up and then getting more and go keep going higher and higher. Um, yeah. Oh, speaking of the Creative Builders one, somebody had mentioned in the comments that this thing will allow you to place blocks like unlimited amounts of blocks if you just point it at something and click on it that doesn't actually work um so if i grab myself like well i was gonna grab myself a quartz block here can i even do that i wonder if i do this and i say make a hundred can i make a hundred of those uh all the quartz is gone <laughs> yeah, the system that we have here is weird let me try doing it this way what is, what is it to craft it oh my goodness um so if I look at quartz, the recipe is, okay, it's in an I pattern. Okay, so if we do this and I make myself quartz blocks, right? So we have 15 of those. You can see here, it only shows that I can do like 15 blocks. So if I place those down, that's it. And I can't place any more. So this wand does not allow you to do like infinite of all the resources. It only does that in creative mode, I am pretty sure. So anyway... I was just using that to place a blunt, a bunch of diamond blocks. But what I saw that we had in our inventory here, uh, builder, this guy, this will allow us to set a pattern, a size, and then we can fill that full of different blocks as long as the builder has access to those blocks. And I think that'll probably save a whole bunch of time here. If we set up a builder to build, um, yeah, you know, like a column, a 10 by 10, of whatever resource and they can just go up there and bean mine it all. I think that's probably going to be the fastest and the easiest way for us to chew through those resources. So a uh, builder does require us to have a card. Let's go into RF tools card. Uh, yeah, shape card. So we have to make one of these and then we have to define the size of it. So let's do that. I need redstone. Can I even <laughs> make redstone? Because everything that we have in the system right now, let's actually do this. Let me grab these. And if I look at redstone, I, need, I really should just go down there and turn off all those things is what should happen here. So we can do that. I can grab the redstone dust here. Now we should be able to craft what we want to craft. So go back to RF tools, this guy, that guy, and now we're missing brick, wait, brick and iron. I thought we had iron ingots in here just a little bit ago. Maybe we had a little bit, but not enough. Iron ingot. 
Okay, so there's our one iron ingot, and then we need bricks. We need clay smelted. We can do that very quickly. Okay, so we can make the shape card. Then we define the area that the shape card is going to exist in, and that should allow us to uh, place a whole bunch of blocks there. So let's get this thing going here. Um, oh, there's a quest for a shape card. Okay, I did not realize that. So if we look at the shape card, we right click on it. You can see it's a box. We can see that it's solid and it's the dimensions of a five by five by five. So if I place down our builder, I'm going to actually place our builder right here on top of this torch. I made the advancement builder. Okay. I guess that's a thing. So if we do that and we do the preview mode, <laughs> I guess it sets it right on top of the builder and those blocks make you suffocate. So this says that it was, not, well, I thought it was a solid block, but it is not. So one thing that we want to do, we want to offset it. Um, so that's the Z that I'm going on. So we want to go into the negative Z. So let's grab, or actually, I guess we can just click here. So if we set this to offset on the Z by minus five. And we do the preview again, it should be behind it this time. Yeah, okay, so we can see that it's over here now. Uh, so we want to increase this in size. We want it to be 10 by 10, I think, and that should fit between these torches, or it might need to be 9 by 9, but kind of I just want to have it fill in this little gap area between those torches. So let's turn it off, turn it back on, and yeah, that might need to be just a 9 by 9. Okay, so we can adjust that as well. So go in here, 9 by nine, nope, off, on, okay. So now, I'm not entirely sure. It's like leaving the uh, the other box in there. Let's turn out the preview mode and let's just get rid of all these things. All right, I think the trick with the builder is if you do the preview, you want to turn the preview off before you adjust the size. If you leave the preview on, then adjust the size and then turn it off and on. It's gonna leave your existing preview blocks here. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. So nine by nine is the correct size and I did have it with the correct offset behind the builder here. So we are good to go. So now we can turn the preview off, we'll do this and we wanna set this thing to be like, I don't know, how about 200 blocks tall? So if we do that, we need to offset it by 100 blocks, I think is how that works, or it might be have to be positive 100. So it like goes right at the level of the builder and then higher. Uh, this is one of those things you gotta kind of play around with to uh, to get it right. Yeah, I think that actually has to go the other way and that might need to be a positive 100. In fact, it might even need to be higher than that. It might need to be 200 blocks. So it's like right at the same level as the builder. I don't actually know how this all works correctly. Oh, you know what? That looks like the bottom. So I think I did that right. Yeah, so... Yeah, that looks actually correct. Since this is hollow on the inside and that's solid along the bottom, I think we're right where we want to be. All right, so we turn that off. Now, this says box and it says solid, but the problem is you can see that that box was actually not solid. Or maybe I have to go back to box and then change it from solid to... I'm not sure what's going on. So there's a hollow and then there's a solid. Now, if I do the preview again, yeah, it looks like it's hollow in the center, but it says it's solid. So I guess maybe the preview is a little deceiving anyway. So now that we have this like <laughs> set up like that, we can uh, grab ourselves a chest for instance, do one of these numbers set it right on top of there. We need to fill it full of something. So let's grab, how about diamond? We'll fill up our inventory full of diamond ore, and then we'll fill up this guy full of diamond ore. All right, and we'll grab two more stacks just for fun to completely fill that. We need to get ourselves a lever, and then we also need to get ourselves a power to power the builder. So I don't see a, oh, I do see a flux point. I am just blind. So we'll just power it from the side here that's charging this all up cool and then we'll do one of these so i think we should be good to go redstone mode on to activate so if i do that it should be placing all the diamond blocks and it looks like it's placing it way up there <laughs> okay well that's fine um 
Oh, yeah. Another thing you probably want to do is uh, make sure it's in one solid chunk because otherwise, yeah, it's got to do like two passes. I think that might be the problem here. So kind of hard to tell what's going on, but yeah, uh, it's only doing like half the chunk, or I guess this portion is going to do this over here, and then like this section, and then this section. Oh, well, that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. So anyway, um, I think what we can do, I'm not entirely sure, but I think we can put a um, interface on top of that that is providing the resources we want, and that should fill this thing all the way up. I do want to try that out because I haven't done that before. Uh, I think we have some applied energistics cabling. Yeah, I can just run that all the way over here and up. Let me do that real quick. All right. So, of course, as soon as I start recording, <laughs> it starts raining. But anyway, uh, so we have our ME interface on top of here. We have diamond ore being provided. So it should be able to see these and grab these. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if it's doing something. Oh, yeah, it definitely looks like it's building. So if we go into our applied energistic system and we look at diamonds, yeah, it is definitely grabbing those things and placing them. So that's pretty cool. So it's going to go through and do this one column and then go start another column. And then eventually this whole thing will be built. And then all I got to do is go all the way to the very top and vein mine my way all the way back down. All right, guys. So now we have this incredibly long, or I guess it's a tall column of diamond ore blocks. <laughs> The next step is just to go all the way up, go into the very center of it, vein mine it all the way down, and then do it again. Yep, this is going to save so much time for me having to place the blocks. Uh, yeah, it looks like this took it all the way to build height. Going up to 200 blocks like I did before, uh, we were starting at like Y70, so we can't really go all the way up. So it's not really doing it 200 tall from where we are. It was only doing it like 170 tall or something. But anyway... This will be a lot of fun. Just got to write this all the way down. Then we're going to have so many entities that I'm going to have to deal with. <laughs> Hopefully I won't lag out the game. So this is all fun and everything, but it is going kind of slow placing all these. And I just remembered that you can infuse these machines to make them go faster. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the builder. Yep. And then we're going to make ourselves an infuser, a machine infuser. There we go. Uh, so we're going to infuse the builder. Oh, I guess there's a quest complete for doing that as well. So we need four stacks of the dimensional shards. One, two, three, four. Then we have 33,000 of the ores, so we're pretty good. Uh, yeah, so we just place the builder in here, and then we just place this stuff like so. And then this goes pretty slow, so we'll just speed that up a little bit and make it go that much faster. But yeah, it takes four full stacks of the dimensional shards in order to fully infuse uh, any of the machines here. We go 100 cool so now our builder is fully infused so that should make it go a lot faster than what we were doing before and i think it makes it use less power but we don't really care too much about that uh anyway so let's put the shape card back in there and we will do this turn it back on and yeah that's going a lot faster placing all of these oh baby all right so it's gonna do this and it's gonna do like a little small part here and a little small part right here and then we can continue fortuning these. Okay, so what's better than one builder? How about two builders? That's right. So I went ahead and I made a second builder. Well, actually, I'm using a second builder that we already had in our system. I made another quarry. This is a fortune quarry card, which is the same thing as fortune three, I do believe. Um, so these are both set up to be in the exact same spot. And now we're within one chunk. Yeah. So this should be a lot nicer. So if we look at the preview for this, that's going to be in the same area inside one chunk that our builder over here is going to be placing the blocks. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to be having one builder building, one builder breaking and fortuning the blocks. So yeah, as this one builds, the other one's going to trail behind it and destroy the blocks. And it's going to be a lot faster and I won't have to do anything myself other than just tell the builder what blocks we're building with. So emeralds, if we look, we have 30,000 of those. We can go ahead and turn this thing on, and that should start building all the way up there. Now, if we turn this one on, it should start trying to fortune at the same time. And if we time it right, well, it doesn't look like we're timed right. 
Uh, it might be starting at the bottom. Oh, you know what? This one, I think, has to be set to loop. I think they both do. So if we do wait on the current position, and this one over here, uh, wait on the current position. Okay, so why does it appear not to be doing anything? It should be going. Fortune, shape card, redstone mode to activate. Do a single run, stop, keep running with redstone signal. I think that's what we need to have happen. And this one over here needs to be the same thing, but it doesn't really look like we're doing anything. Did it like... Hmm. Let me try turning it off and on again. Oh, okay, now we're doing something. Okay, but I did infuse this block. I'm not entirely sure why it wasn't working before. Maybe I was too quick on turning it off, but... Oh, we, oh, I made a mistake here. <laughs> yeah, we want to have a clearing fortune card. All right, let's turn this thing back off again. So we have the fortune quarry, but we want this to be a clearing fortune quarry. Otherwise, it's going to leave dirt blocks <laughs> in its place. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's take the card out. We will grab some glass. Wrap glass around here. Okay. So now it is a clearing fortune quarry. You should have all the same settings before or as before. So we'll turn that thing back on. It should be removing the dirt now. We don't want that dirt actually there. How's our dirt supply? Our dirt supply in applied energistics is going up quite quickly. But that's not actually what we care about. How about the emerald? So we have 25,000 emeralds in the system. Let's go ahead and turn this one back on over here. And then keep running with a redstone signal. Okay, so this is going to keep fortuning, and it should go back all the way up to the top again. And fortune, as this one is placing blocks. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we got that cool effect. It almost looks like it's a droplet of emeralds coming all the way down or something. But, yeah, we have run out of blocks. So, or maybe it stopped... Why did it stop here and went all the way back up to the top? I'm not exactly sure. But either way, it's placing and breaking those blocks in a large area. You're going to continually do that over and over again. And we get to collect all of the rewards. We don't have to worry about doing it by ourselves anymore. Yep, it's just happening with two separate builders. And it should go back up there and clear the rest of that. Awesome. Cool. So now all I got to do is swap that out for like redstone and our other... Uh, ores that we need like our dimensional shards our draconium pretty much everything like that cool and then we'll, we'll have all those ores fortuned all right guys so we got most of those ores fortuned and i have let's see what do we have now yeah we have like 112,000 appetite actually i wanted to see i guess ingot yeah so we're up to 619 draconium ingots after all that draconium ore has gone through so pretty much all the different ores uh that we can fortune we went ahead and we fortuned we do still have some ores here that we can pulverize and then smelt and all of that um but yeah for the most part i think we're pretty much good i'm trying to get through all the cobalt and the ardite i processed those we had like thirty thousand of each one of those uh ores so trying to process all of that and get that into ingot form now, the next thing I'd like to work on is, yeah, I'd like to start working on trying to increase the FPS around the base. Like, we're barely hitting 60 FPS anymore, especially when I'm recording. Um, I kind of feel like we want to get rid of these drawers. Yeah. I've seen it before where if you have a large amount of compacting drawers, the uh, or I guess any of the storage drawers in one area, it really starts to affect the FPS even if you have like the labels turned off and stuff. So I feel like it'd be much better if we could take these, move them somewhere else and still actually be able to interact with them. So in order to do that, I think what we're going to end up doing is look at the compact machines. So compact machines is a mod that you build this little block here and then you can use a personal shrinking device to go inside of it. And then you can set up ways where you can import and export items through different faces of the compact machine. So I think that's what I want to do. Now, in order to build this thing, you need to, you know, build a multi-block structure as shown here. We need 98 of the compact machine walls, a block of emerald, which goes in the exact center. That's if we're doing the maximum compact machine, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. 
Uh, you have to drop an ender pearl into the field somewhere. Um, and then that'll give you the maximum compact machine. So let's go ahead and start working on this. We need to get ourselves four of these miniaturization fields. Uh, so you get four of those with one craft. Then we need a personal shrinking device to make that craft. So let's start here. Okay, personal shrinking device get. And then we can do this. I do not believe it uses the personal shrinking device in the recipe. How are we out of diamonds? What the heck? Uh, I guess it must have ate through all of those before I disconnected uh, these things over here. Yeah, have these all disconnected now so we actually have resources again. Yeah, it was pretty much eating everything. <laughs> we weren't able to, to craft anything. It was getting a, a little frustrating, I guess. Uh, Eye of Ender. Let's craft one of these guys. All right, and there's our miniaturization field projector. Awesome. So we have that. We need the personal shrinking device or Game Boy. Okay, so we have both of those. And now we need to make the compact machine walls. Now we need uh, 96, 98 of those for the maximum size. And then to make 16 of these, you need one block of iron and some redstone. Okay, so iron, let's make, how about 16? We're probably gonna end up making a few of these things, to be honest. So I'll grab 16 of those, 16 of these, and we'll just turn all that into the machine wall. So I think we're pretty much good with this portion of it. Now, actually, uh, if we go back to the machine wall, in order to make that, you have to place down the iron, place down redstone, you have to drop another piece of redstone into here. So we're gonna actually need twice the amount of redstone as what I have, so we'll do 32. Okay, I think that should be pretty good. Now, this doesn't have to be anything crazy. We could just do it down here. It's not a big setup for this. So let's place this guy here. If you right click on it, it'll kind of show you where the next one needs to go. Now it shows right here that this torch is where one should go. So I think I might be able to place that. Yep, we can do that, cool. So if I do that, it shows where the other ones need to be. Like so, and another one on top of this torch. Cool, all right, so now we got ourselves a little bit of a field projector. Cool, let's place down the iron, redstone, cue a piece of redstone in there, and there you go. Now we got 16 of those compact machine walls. So we can do this over and over again. In fact, you can place the next one while it's still crafting the other one. Guess I'll place it on the edge. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't able to place that because it was in the center. <laughs> I don't know, I guess there's like some block there and prevents that from working. Uh, but anyway, I'll, let me go ahead and finish up crafting the rest of these things and then we'll continue on. All right guys, so we got four stacks of these compact machine walls and now we're just doing a five by five structure here so we can get ourselves the maximum size one. Okay, so that is two layers here. Let me grab a wand. So we can build this up just a little bit higher easily. So that is one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Now we need to put a block of emerald in the center here. I think it just has to be floating like that. Yep, and then we can seal off the top of this thing. Like so, cool. So that is everything that we should need for the maximum size. And then if I drop a pearl on there, yep, there we go. So now it is crafting all of that into a maximum size compact machine cube. Can I like... All right, so here we go, our maximum compact machine. Cool. So if we take this thing, we can just set it anywhere for right now. And if we use our personal shrinking device, we can right click on it. And here we go. So that little five by five turns into a 13 by 13 by 13. And we can place whatever we want in here. Now this is in a completely different dimension. So we can place all of our machines and things that are kind of laggy in here. And then we can use something called a tunnel. Yep, uh, a tunnel uh, uses the machine frame or machine wall hopper and some redstone. And you just craft it the same way. You just toss in a piece of redstone in there and it makes the tunnels. Um, so that's all good. We can pipe items in and out. There's a redstone tunnel, so you can do a redstone signal in and out. And then if you want to get applied energistics in and out of this thing, 
Yeah, we're gonna need another mod here. There's a mod called what is it called? Capability? Capability adapter? Yeah, capability adapter. This mod uh takes applied energistics and it you basically put one of these blocks on the outside against a tunnel, and you can place one of these on the inside of your compact machine on the other side of the tunnel, and you can pipe applied energistics into this, which is pretty cool. So that is what we're going to do. So the next step is I need to grab all of our drawers, I guess, and place them into here. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun, <laughs> and hopefully our system doesn't overflow with all the items that we got coming in while we're doing that. Uh, so that's gonna be the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and make some of the I mean, capability adapters. Well, actually, let's see if we can get applied energistics into this thing, first of all, before we do that. Let's try and do that together. So let us come over here. We need to make ourselves a tunnel. Uh, so we need a hopper. I think we needed eight redstone. So there's the eight redstone, and then we needed one of these walls. Okay, so there's that. Oh, I think we need another redstone to drop onto this thing. Let's actually make these tunnels real quick. So we place this guy down with the hopper on top. We need eight redstone around it. Okay, and then Q redstone, cool. So that's gonna make our tunnels. Uh, so the capability adapter, we should just be able to do that. So we want two of these things. Awesome. All right, so we should have everything pretty much ready to go here. So let's come inside. We need to find a spot where we can get some applied energistics going on. Let me glass cable. Let's just do this just to test it out. This is probably not where we're going to keep this thing for forever. Uh, so that'll go into one of these adapters, and this is going to go onto, um, yeah, the, the machine itself. So which way are we facing? So that's west. So that's the west side. Cool, all right, so let's go inside here. Now, if we put a tunnel on the wall, it doesn't really matter where, right here is fine. And we right click on this, we can say that connects to the west side. So if we put a capability adapter here, and then we, well, if we had something that connected to applied energistics, we could test that out. Let's go back out and see if we can get something that might connect. How about an interface? Craft that up real quick. I thought they crafted faster. Apparently, we don't have like any processors or pure service quartz already pre-made, so I need to tell the system to do that. And let's grab something else that we can provide. How about cobblestone? Okay, so let's go back into here. All right, so if we attach this to here and we place cobblestone, yeah, you can see that we are getting cobblestone from our applied energistics system, which is fantastic. So we are now able to pipe applied energistics into this uh, compact machine. Yeah, this is going to be really good. So again, next thing I need to do is grab all of our storage drawers, bring them in here, reset them all up, and get applied energistics connected to it. And then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So all of the compacting drawers and regular storage drawers have been moved from this corner. Yep. And they're all inside of our compacting or our compact machine now. So if we go into here, yep, we can see we have all the stuff going on. Uh, I did add in some more compacting drawers in case we need those for later. And then only left one block of space between the compacting drawers and the regular ones in case we need a lot more storage. I'm not sure if we do or don't. Maybe it'd be better to like have these up against this wall so you can just kind of see both of them. I don't know. But I just wanted to get everything out of the overworld, out of our base, into something like this, which is, we can leave the label shown so it's easier to see what we're looking at. And we don't have to worry about the extra tile entity lag of having them all in the base. So, yeah. Oh, entry points. Oh, I didn't know you could sit. Oh, if you do a shift right click, you can say this is the block that you want to enter the place in. Huh. I didn't know that you could do that. That's pretty cool. I like it. So, yeah. I feel like... Right now, the base is definitely feeling like it's still kind of laggy. We still got some things that we should move out of here. Like, for instance, we just added in all of these machines. These don't really need to be here in the base. We put them here because we had room. Uh, we don't necessarily need that many of them. Like, we could just process one at a time with one of the machines. 
Yep, I mean, that's a thing we could do. I might end up moving this to the overworld or into like its own compacting machine out of the overworld. I'm not sure. Another thing I would like to move is like these specific machines here that are just to make one item, but there's like, you know, 15 machines that do it. <laughs> uh, we got another one right here, Cuba, cubic boron nitride. Not, yeah, nitride. Um, yeah, anyway, so we can start moving some of like these bigger machines into those compact machines. Another thing uh, that I'd like to do, let's come over here. Um, yeah, a lot of these advanced rocketry machines, these machines here aren't used too often, but because they have like all these rendered stuffs in them, they are definitely using up a lot of our frames and making the base laggier just by being here. Like if you were to break each one of these multi-blocks so they're no longer showing these renders, like the FPS increase is pretty substantial. And another thing I noticed over here earlier today is that I have a rolling machine here and a rolling machine here. I'm not sure how that happened, but this is the one that we hooked up originally and we have lubricant in there to make like our uh, our air tanks or whatever. Yeah, for the space suit. And then this one over here, we haven't done anything with and we don't even have any recipes in it. So like we have a bunch of these machines around that aren't being used that often that are taking up a lot of uh, FPS. Uh, we have these machines here. These could all go into a compact machine. So I don't know, like as time goes on, we'll probably end up moving more and more of these things. I did get rid of like our blast furnace and our coal coke machine over here, trying to help increase the uh, the frame rate a bit more. Uh, little by little, I'm increasing stuff, but yeah, it, as time goes on, it's just gonna get worse and worse unless we are being uh, careful about it. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go ahead and give it or wrap up the episode here for today. Um, yeah, I feel like the things that we're doing right now are pretty good. Uh, being able to move things into another dimension, be able to put applied energistics into that other dimension. That's really awesome. Yeah. And then I always do like taking a couple of builders like we did earlier and then have one build and one fortune quarry. That's pretty cool. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.